Wednesday. Today I'm at DB Paint. Um, so this is the absolute legend, Dave Bastin, that will be painting my car when it's done, or at least when it's ready to come here. He's currently got my cam covers outside. That I mean, well, he's on holiday. The other two guys, George and Mike, are here. Um, yeah, so my job today is going to be clean them up and hopefully get them in some epoxy primer and then wait for them to come back holiday so we can just give them a quick coat of paint. Hopefully they'll look sick. Um, I'll stick his, his Instagrams should be appearing below and his website will be in the description. Um, or website and Facebook will be in the description. So uh, yeah, let's have a little walk around. Right, so first thing to note, in the booth, we've got lovely WRX. In for some, uh, yeah, front wing repairs, other little bits and bobs, the roof needs doing. So if we step outside, hang out of the booth, we've got Mike and the S2000. Now this S2000 is George's. George, do you want to tell the world what's wrong with your S2000? It's rusty. Apart from it's rusty. I don't know. Fuck. It's not fucked. It's not fucked, but I don't know if you can, uh, hopefully you can hear me over this. It's not fucked, but yet yeah, this man here. Say hi, mate. Hello. <laughs> The story of the rusty S2000. What? What's me? What's me? It's not me. It's fun. No, no, I kid, I kid. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It looks sick when it's done. Yeah. Sure. If I don't find any more rust, I'll be there. And then, uh, yeah, you know, a couple more curls we've got in here at the moment. Obviously, registers have been blurred out. We've got lovely, lovely Audi Quattro. Unfortunately, this suffers from old car syndrome, so that is full of fucking rust, like everywhere. Um, so yeah, let's get to cleaning cam covers. Here we are back at home. Uh, I had to cut the stuff at Dave's a bit short um, because I, like a knob, cut my hand the other day I'm trying to take <laughs> the uh, seal out the end or see the rear crank seal out of the holder for the engine. Uh, managed to stab myself in the hand, filled up with thinners. That sucks. So, but while I've been while I've been at Dave's, um, my dad's been working on the car because he's my bodywork man. Because I mm, not my thing. Like I, I don't mind pissing around with a bit of fiberglass, which I'll be doing in a minute. But pure bodywork is not my thing. So uh, if I just show you what he's done, so we've remade the whole inner arch, um, and he's had to add this bit in here because this outside edge folded in too much. Um, so thankfully he's managed to cut that out, add this bit in, sweet as, just got to stone chip it um, and shuts it so it matches the rest of this and it's protected. So that's that bit. Um, my job though is because, well my job now is to make this face here match this face here. Um, I don't know if you can tell from this video, so if we go this one, yeah, this face, nice and, yeah. Thin with a little bit of lip down here. Go over to this edge. Big fat lip, big fat lip. So my job is to make a mold of that side. Put it on this side, well at least, you know, put a slice down here, put it on this side, fiberglass it all in. Should be good. Let's give it a go. So right, what we'll do is we'll place this like this and there we are, nice little cut out. So that matches that edge perfectly. Um, it's a bit, a bit of an overhang here, but that's fine because, uh, because it, well, that's probably about the thickness of this mounting lip here. So once I cut this out of some signboard, I can um, stick it on the inside of the other side of the other 
arch. So uh, yeah, move over to the workbench and cut out some signboard. Right, so there's my cutout. So bear in mind, it's this edge that we've got to pay attention to and the thickness. Spare bit of signboard I've got. So uh, it's just a simple case of lining it up with something. Trace around it, however badly. matter about the bottom but there we go there's my general shape of what I need hopefully if these scissors will do it cut that out and that will give me the shape that I need for the passenger side arch Yeah, nice thick bit of signboard. That should give me the edge or the face that I need to duplicate. That's just a case of cutting the fiberglass, inserting that in it with maybe I'll probably some hot glue it to be honest. Um, and then yeah, slip some fiberglass over the top and it should make the faces equal on both sides. Give it a go. So just as a quick reference, um, this is the side that needs altering. This is the cardboard cutout, but I've just you know obviously flipped it over to match this side and uh, okay a little bit of difference but that's the thickness difference all of that now just needs to be added in brilliant right so it is only this edge I need uh, this bit as you can see the bumper is not mounted properly yet this edge needs to be molded in to fit the bumper because um, God knows why this kit molded badly, but it's just, it's a shit mold, to be really honest with you. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do, I've got my Dremel here, I'm just gonna take a slice, straight down this face here, to about here, or to where it starts curving into the bottom. Take a slice out of that, which will then be able, I'll then be able to pull that, pull the bottom out, because all of this has been bonded and screwed in. Um, so yeah, the only other pain in the ass thing I've got is the fact that I can't get behind this easily. Um, now if I pull the bumper out, then obviously I can get behind this, which I'll do in a minute. When I, when I, once I've made the cut, I can get behind it, put the mold in, put some hot glue in there, secure it, job done. <laughs> right, so now it's been cut. Obviously you can, oh, it's not moving all that much. Not moving as much as I wanted, or as much as I need. But, I mean, it's a bit of a tight one, but if I can just get behind it, I might be able to move it enough. If you can see that, because my hand's probably in the way. I might be able to get that to move enough, just to you know, bring that out a little bit, because it's really this face that needs to be adjusted. Right. Bumper out, let's do it. Right, so now the bumper's out. Uh, no, that's the cardboard one. This can now be put up in here. Hopefully, I can push, pull that out enough. To be able to place that inside there. Although, it's, it's proving to be a lot harder than I thought it would be. doesn't help, <laughs> as we just found out, is where my dad's replaced this front, this panel inside the wheel arch, he's made up a little bracket so that the, uh, yeah, he's made up a little bracket that the uh, bottom of the body kit just bolts onto. So now I've got to try and take that off to then gain access to the back of the body kit, which will hopefully allow me to put it out wider. Right. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. Oh. Right, and 
and that should oh, just grab a tape measure. So on the other side, we've got 10 mil up here between this face and the edge, roughly. And at this point here, we've got roughly 40 mil. So let's have a little look here. Much easier to measure on the other side. That's about 10 mil. And that's about 40 mil. So that is now in the, give or take a couple of mil, but you won't notice it in the end, hopefully. That is now in the correct place. Now time for the joyous event that is fiberglass. Right, so what I'm going to be using uh, fiberglass wise, or at least resin wise, is Tricell Composites fiberglass resin, with, which is, oh, to be really honest, I can't remember the percentage. I think it's like 10% of this to hardener. Um, I'm also going to be using chop strand mat, or sorry, chop strand. So you know, it's literally just individual fibers. Um, just because you can jam it in the hole because we all know how much we love jamming things in holes. Jam it in the hole nice and easy because you know, normal, normal mats just unfortunately too thick, not flexible enough at the moment. That will be used later, but as a surface, as a, surf as a surface on the uh, on the face. And for the moment, just to sort of stick the two sides together, it's going to be chop strand, which is now all over the counter and now all over the floor. All right, let's so make this up, mix this up. If I can even get the tub open. Right, potentially a little bit watery for what I need, but screw it, we'll go with it. Right, this is where the fun begins. So we've got, you know, still standard little paintbrush, our chopped mat, and our resin. So the plan is to hopefully pick some of this in here. Give that a nice good coat. And make an awful mess with the chop with the chop strand. Now I have got the uncut bit of signboard I had on the floor just to sort of try and keep everything nice and neat. You sort of just want to stipple that together and hopefully the fucking kit doesn't move. Because if it moves, this is going to be a waste of time. What we're going to do, probably a terrible thing, but just start folding all this over, and trying to push it into the gap as best we can, just while it's all still liquid, or jelly more like. Yeah, unfortunately the mould didn't work down the bottom here, because again, should have, hot, should have hot glued it, really. You know, I don't listen to myself sometimes, and it's my own demise. But hopefully, hopefully that will do the job I want it to, and we'll have a nice fresh face for that in the morning. Put some more glass resin on there. I'll start folding all these random bits over. Again, just take the bits off my hand, pat them in. Because again, it's always it's always better to have too much and have to get rid of some than it is to have not enough and have it and have to try and add some more to a product that's already started going off. So that probably will take another couple of goes just to fill that gap out, make it solid. Um, 
It's also the lesson to learn here of measure three times, cut once. Because this side has been bonded on. So this side will not come off this car. And unfortunately, this is the side that's wrong. So, you know, I held my hands up. I've made a massive cock up here when this was bonded on. But, hey-ho, we can only try and fix it now. So, right. Hopefully. This, hopefully, you know, I'm taking my gloves off now. That's it. I'm done. That should stay like this. Uh for tonight and then I'll have a little look in the morning see what it looks like and yeah see you tomorrow right so it's now Sunday morning um, just coming here you know all the fiberglass has gone off all nice and solid a couple of little air bubbles I can see from you know how badly I did it and obviously I've fiberglassed in all these screws which I've got to take out as well but hopefully I can peel that off. There you go. Right. Good reason to use something like a signboard. You know, it's plastic. It's a. Um, I can't remember what the plastic's called, but it's nice and shiny plastic with no sort of no perforations in it. So the fiberglass just peels straight off. So that's now off of there, which means that is now fully supported by itself. I mean, yeah, apart from the air bubbles, there's about an inch of extra fiberglass behind it because the board moved. But all in all, that's pretty solid. And then if we just use the tape measure. So if you remember, the top was, was 10 mil from this flat edge to this outside edge. And just above the crease here was 40 mil. Let's have a little look, see if we're still within those. About 10 mil. And about 40 mil. So hopefully, once this has all been sanded back, um, I'm probably going to have to add a bit more fiberglass in here, but from the insides, so that'll be a challenge. But once this is all sanded back, it should hopefully match the other side. But that is for the next video. See you then.